Okay, away we go. Um, can I answer any questions for either of you today? Uh-huh. Right. Um, I don't know that I was going to talk about anything. Is there a reason just using resources won't work for you? Um, no, it works fine. Okay. Um, it would really just be a matter of going and putting in the right match uh, method calls in the routes file in order to build those RESTful routes by hand if that's the way you wanted to do it. But in general, I would just say stick with resources. It ought to be giving you exactly what you need. Uh, it's possible to duplicate what resources does by hand. It's just a lot of extra work. All right? Anything else? Okay. Well, what I wanted to do today then was start on something a little bit new, still kind of in the topic of routes. What I wanted to start talking about today is a neat little trick you can do with routes, something that I find useful a surprising amount of the time, and that is what they call nested routes. Um, essentially, We've seen how Rails makes it pretty quick and easy for us to be able to put together a set of RESTful routes for a given resource, RESTful routes for our gadget types, for example, or for the gadgets themselves. But there are times when I think having just pure straights, what you might call single level RESTful routes, can sometimes be a little bit awkward. Uh, the kind of a thing I'm thinking of is, let's say we were building a Rails app to keep track of classes that we took. So let's say we had models for semester and for course, right? So we've got the full setup where we can create, view, edit, destroy semesters, and the complete setup where we can also do all of those things for individual courses. That's all well and good. It would be very much in a way kind of like our gadget example that we've been working on for the last week or so, where we go to one part of the website and we can do all the things we need to do with gadget types. We can go to another part of the website and we can do everything we need to do with gadgets. Right? If we were to go kind of this traditional route with semesters and courses, it would be the same sort of thing. We would go to one set of pages to work with semesters, a different set of pages to work with courses. The trick to that, though, is, in my mind anyway, courses are something that are fairly completely dependent on semesters, right? What are the odds that somebody would take the same course twice in the same semester? Pretty much non-existent. I've never known anybody to take the same class twice at the same time, right? You might take the same class twice, but in different semesters, right? And certainly, you'll take different classes every semester. So it's sort of like the course information itself is com incomplete unless you also take into account which semester that course was actually taken. Are you with me there? All right? Not every model is like that, where one thing is completely dependent on another thing. But quite often, it seems like I run into situations where that's exactly the kind of logic that I feel like I need where I have one type of model that is completely dependent one way on another model. And trying to work with the two things separately always feels just a little bit awkward. Like with courses and semesters. I go one to one part of the website and I see information about semesters. Well, for the most part, who cares? What information is there about a semester purely that I would be that interested in? I mean, yeah, if I want to go back and see what the end date for the fall 2009 semester was, I could do that. But odds are, if I'm going to look at a semester, what I'm really interested in is I want to know about the courses I took that semester, right? But in a pure, straight sort of setup, right, courses are an entirely different part of the website in a way. There's the semester part and there's the course part. So where do I go if I want to know about the courses that I took? in fall 2009. Do I go to the semester part? That kind of makes sense because I'm talking about a specific semester. But what I actually want to see is courses. So maybe I should go look at courses. 
Over in the courses section, what would I most likely have by default? Probably just a list of every course I've ever taken, maybe not necessarily even broken up by semester, so not in a very usable form. Right? Do you kind of see what I'm getting at? How the two are really very much kind of tied together? Not so much that we would ever want to make them a single model, a single entity in the database. Right? We still in the database would need to have those things separated as two different tables, but as far as the actual use of the data goes, it's almost like the two things are really one. Right? Semesters where courses during that semester are almost like attributes, extended attributes of the semester itself. Right? Our regular single layer routes, uh, our single layer RESTful routes that we get that we've been working with by default up to this point don't really kind of support that concept, but that's where these things called nested routes come in. What nested routes basically let us do is to have RESTful routes that are multiple layers deep. So we could have one layer, for example, that lets us do the normal sort of things we would want to do with semesters. But we could then plunge another layer deeper than that, where we go down to a set of RESTful routes that are available for courses. But the course parts of those routes would always be embedded underneath a context of some given semester. Right? This is actually the way I have my website set up, for example. Right? If we go to my website, we start off at what looks like just my standard domain name. Right? But what actually we have here if I kind of navigate through it to where we actually end up with a full URL up there. Oh, come on, network. If I actually go to this semester, when you go to the home page of my website, this is the actual true URL for it. A little hard to see up there, but essentially the path part of it is slash semesters slash 15, essentially. Right? which is essentially a show route for a semester. And then embedded below that route is then slash sections. So I have my site set up to use nested routes, where I'm saying give me slash sections, but only for this one specific given semester. Right? If I then actually click on a course, right? <clears throat> What we actually have then is a route that goes three layers deep. Okay? What I have at that point is a show route for semester 15. Right? And then nested below that, there's another show route, this time specifically for a section. And then below that, I have an index route specifically for assignments. So essentially, I'm saying assignments within the context of section 85, which occurs within the context of semester 15. Right? So layers upon layers of routes is essentially what's happening there. Those are nested routes. And there's a good number of times when I think that makes quite a bit of sense to do things that way. Okay? Let's uh, ditch our gadgets example. I'm tired of our gadgets. And let's start a new example today. Let's put together an example where we do albums and albums have tracks. Right? So basically two different entities is what we'd be looking at. Right? An album has many tracks. A track belongs to an album. Right? Now with that kind of setup, whenever I want to see tracks, is there a better chance that I just want to see every track in my database? or a better chance that I would want to look at the tracks for a specific album. To me, it makes more sense that I would probably want to use tracks for an album. Right? So we're basically talking about tracks being functionally dependent on the album. Right? If I create a new track, would I want to create a new track just all by itself, independent of any album? Probably not. Pretty much every track is a part of some album or another. Right? So when I create a new track, I would like for it to become a part of an album. When I edit a track, it would be part of an album. Right? If I delete an album, what should happen to tracks? Well, if I don't want an album anymore, that probably means I don't want its tracks either. Tracks, in a lot of ways, are sort of the most important attribute of any given album. Right? 
So let's kind of play with that a little bit. Right? I'm going to go ahead and start a new project. Rails new, I'll call it the music example. There we go. All right. Let me go ahead and open this up in my editor. Not exactly what I wanted. There we go. It's my new project. Okay. So in my new music example, I want to have albums and I want to have tracks. Let me go ahead and create the albums first. All right. Let's see, what are our attributes of albums going to be? Let's do uh, Rails G Scaffold. So we'll go ahead and let Rails automatically create our controller, our model, all of our view files for us, and then we'll come back and edit them as necessary. Okay. Here I want to create an album. And let's say that every album has a title, which is a string, an artist, which is a string. Let's say it has a duration, which is an integer. No, let's not do duration. Let's do that on tracks. Let's say it has a year. And that's probably good. If every album has a title and artist in a year, that's probably sufficient. Right. So I'll go ahead and generate that scaffold. Let me also then generate a scaffold for a track. And let's say every track has a title, a duration, which is an integer, an album, that it references. Oh, and let's say every track has a number too. I'm going to go back and put that one first. A number which is an integer. So, uh, oops, I didn't quite get it first, did I? Missed title there. There. A number, a title, a duration, and an album is what I have in there for a track. So I'll go ahead and generate that scaffold. We okay so far? All right, let me go ahead and do rake db migrate. Catch the database up. So I've got my albums table, got my tracks table. Okay, over in my editor then, let me go take a look at my models real quick. My album model. I'm going to say validate artist title and year for presence true. And I'm going to say validates year numericality true. I think I misspelled that pretty badly. Let's try that. Also in my album, I'm going to say has many tracks. And I'm going to order those tracks by the tracks number. So whatever number I assign to a track, it'll use those numbers to uh, put them into order whenever I retrieve them from an album. Okay. Over in my track model then, my track class, it already has belongs to album in there. I'm 
Let me also then say that we're going to validate the number, the title, the duration for presence, presence true, and validate uh, the number and the duration for numericality. Okay, so my models ought to be pretty well set up. Okay, let me go ahead and start my server. And if I jump over to a browser, take a look at what we have right now. If I go to localhost 3000 slash albums, I can see all my albums listed here. This would, of course, just be the albums themselves. So the title and the artist in the year is the data I would see for any album that I actually put in here. I could make a new album, test album one, by test artist one in the good old year 1999, as in party as if it's. <clears throat> I'll create that album. There's all the details of it, right? But who cares, right? Seeing these three little details of an album is only a small fraction of what I would be interested in whenever I go to show an album. I don't really care about just seeing these three details. Chances are, if I want to see the details in an album, what I want to see is the tracks on it. That's what's really important. If I want to see tracks, though, I have to go over to the tracks part, slash tracks as my path. And then I would have my tracks listed here. I could, of course, come in and put in tracks. Test track one, duration, let's say is 2.3. Right? And right now what it's doing is it's just giving me a text field where I can put in an identifier for the album. I would need to go in and then replace that with a drop down that gives me a list of all of the albums. Right? If I was going to make this work this way. Can you see some problems with that? How many albums do you have? I'm not the biggest music buff in the world, but I've got hundreds easily. So if we were going to stick with this basic sort of single leveled setup, what would happen is every time I went to get a new track, I would first have to create the album for it. Right? And then when I went to create a track, I would then have to pick from a drop down that showed me hundreds and hundreds of albums to say which album that particular track goes to. Ugh, no, that doesn't sound like that would be very friendly to work with at all. all right? I'm not even going to bother to create this track, I don't think. Okay. So are you with me on the basic issue, the basic problem? Okay. Overall, it's really not all that difficult to correct, not all that difficult to fix. Right? Fundamentally, what we need to do is we just need to create some nested routes. If I go over to my config directory and open up my routes file, I have two resource lines in there that were put in for me automatically by the scaffold generator. Resources for tracks, resources for albums. In addition to that, I might also set a root route. Maybe I'll say my root route, uh, set it to albums index. So I'll always start off at my list of albums. And then if I want to nest tracks underneath albums, what I can do is the resources call for albums that automatically creates all of my albums routes for me. I can actually pass a block to that. And if I then just take the resources method call for tracks and put it inside that block, bingo. That should do the trick. So 
So I'm just telling Rails that the track routes <clears throat> should be embedded inside of or below the album routes. If I jump back over to the console, if I run rake routes now, I can take a look at what I end up with. I have about 14 different routes there, which is about what you'd expect, about seven per model. Okay. Down here at the bottom, all of these are your pretty standard traditional routes, except for the root one. That one doesn't really count in there, does it? How about those seven right there? So I can get to index, create, new edit, show, update, and destroy for albums, just like we've been doing. No difference there. Right? The routes all use the standard RESTful types. Rails names the ones that it usually names, so we'll have our nice little route methods available to us. That part's not really much different. But up here at the top, the routes having to do with tracks are a bit longer and more complicated now because you can see what Rails has done is it's embedded them all below albums. So every one of these track routes begins with slash albums followed by an album ID. So essentially, any time I go to get to a track, I have to get to a track within the context of one particular album. Slash album slash and then that album's ID will tell me which album we're working with. And then for that given album, I can then go and do anything with that particular album's tracks that I need. Right? So anytime I go to look at tracks, I'll be looking at tracks for a specific album. When I edit or create a new track, that new track or that edited track will be for a specific album. So I won't have to have a drop down that lists hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of albums in it to pick from. Right? I won't have to pick the album at all when I'm creating the track because the track will already be uh, will be being created within the context of an album that I've already navigated to. Right? On your on your ingenious website, is it you have nested to block new blocks? Yeah. Yeah, one inside another, inside another. And some of the worst parts of my site I think I go about five levels deep, which I would not completely recommend. Right? I think two to three levels of nesting is probably about the limit. Two is fine. I think nesting two levels like we're doing here is a great, great tool, great technique. Three, yeah, maybe, but I think you start getting kind of into a gray area there. When you start hitting four and five levels, I think you're probably going a little bit nuts and maybe it's time to rethink the hierarchy of your data. right? So if, if I were going to go back and redo my website, that is definitely one of the top tens that I would need to redo. There's places where my routes get very deep, ridiculously deep. Okay. All right. So with that change made, okay, how that's actually going to affect things is if I go to albums now, right, basically not a whole lot seems to be that different. For albums, it's really not. If I view my albums, if I create a new album, right? show an album, edit an album, everything with albums is just like it was before. Okay? The trick now is that I can't go to tracks directly. If I try to just go to the slash tracks path, I get an error, a route error, because there is no way to get to tracks directly. Tracks now can only be accessed through albums. So if I, for example, went to the show page for a given album, so my URL is slash album slash one, if I then went to slash tracks after that, hey, that works, fundamentally. To make it work more completely, we'll have to go through and do a little bit of uh, uh, rebuilding on how albums and tracks are actually handled in the default controllers and views that were put together for us by the scaffold generator. Now, typically the way I like to set this up 
is I like to usually get rid of the show page for the top level model. So essentially the show page that I currently have for albums, I don't see any reason for this page to exist. What I would prefer to do is that whenever I want to quote unquote show an album, what I really want to do is go over and show the tracks for that album because that's the most important detail. Right? The other little things like the name of the album, the artist, the year, those can be filled in on the track index for that given album easily enough. Right? So that's one of the first changes I would make is I would go to the views for albums and I would just wipe out its show page. I don't want it to exist. So I'm just going to move it to the trash. So under albums, I've got my form partial, edit index, and new, and that's it. If I'm not going to have a true show page, then in the albums controller, I probably don't actually need for there to be a show action. There's no page for it to render anymore. Instead, I'm going to use the track index as the show page for an album. So I'm going to wipe out that show action from my album controller. Okay. Doing that then introduces a few little problems. And there, that is that there are a number of different places in the album setup that expect there to be a show page. Like when I click a show link, or after I create a new album or edit one, all those things take me to a show page, and I don't have a show page anymore. So what I might need to do is just start off by running through the album's controller and the album's views, and anywhere that we were going to the show page, I want to have it go to the track index page instead. Right? So for example, here in create, the album create method, if we've successfully saved an album right here, we redirect to the album show page. Okay. Well, that page doesn't exist anymore. Okay. So here, instead of redirecting to the album show page, what I instead want to do is I want to redirect to the track index for that album. Okay. What would my route for that be? track index right up here. Okay. So the method I could use there would be album underscore tracks underscore path or URL. Okay. So instead of album right there, I'm going to say album underscore tracks underscore URL. And in that actual path, where it has the album ID right there, that means that I need to supply that. I need to supply the album ID. So I can just take the album and pass that as an argument to that method. So now whenever I create a new album, instead of trying to take me to album show, it'll take me to album track index. Okay. Down in the update method for my albums, the exact same thing right there. If we've successfully updated the attributes of the album, instead of going to the album show page, I want to go to the album's track index. Nothing to it. Just those couple places, I think, if I remember correctly. I didn't see any place else in here where it's saying go to show. There will be a couple places in the views, though. On the album's index page, there's an explicit link to show an album right there. I would want that to go to the album's track index, and I'll just pass album the local album that's given to me by this each iterator I'm in 
instead of the uh, instance variable album. On the new page, nothing there. On the edit page, right here, there's a link to go to the show page for an album. Same ID, same idea. Go to album tracks URL instead. The track index for that album. It's not so bad, is it? I'm glad you said no, because that was the easy part. Is it possible to leave the routes in for tracks in case they just want to look at a list of all the tracks? Yeah, it's possible. You could have duplicate, not duplicate, but sort of double routes for tracks. Uh, but then figuring out how to sort of sort them can get to be a little bit complicated. If they're all going through tracks controller, there'd have to be some logics in the tracks controller that figure out whether it's being accessed within the scope of an album or whether they're being accessed directly. It can be done. I think even in a second here when we dig into that part, you'll probably see generally how that could be done, if not specifically, at least the basic idea of it. Okay. All right. If I jump back over to my browser, if I click the show link for an album, it takes me to its track list now. If I edit an album, I'll just edit the artist. It takes me then to its track list instead of to the show page. Oops. So that all seems to be working fine. Where? When you try to go back to the index page? Uh, on which page was that? So if you start off at album index and you click the show link, you get a routing error? No, I'm going back to just albums. It doesn't show me I'm still not following where you're hitting that. When you just go to slash albums? When you type in the URL. Mm -hmm. it says error. Hmm, let me come look. Oh, oh, I think it's talking about probably when you were calling the uh, method there to create the show link. Mm -hmm. You're doing add album. There is no add album. It's okay. just an album. Yeah. All right. Uh oh. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. Hard to concentrate with that feeling. You just know it's about to happen. Okay. Maybe I'm all right. We'll try and go on. Okay. The album part of this is pretty well set up now. What we would need to concentrate on next is the actual track part. If I pick one of my two albums, I'll just go to the show page, or what I'm calling the show page for my first album, which is actually the track index for that album. When we first get to that page, everything looks to be okay, but if I try to create a new track at that point, you immediately see that everything is actually very broken. Right? The default setup that was built for us for tracks by the scaffold generator was not at all prepared to have tracks embedded below an entirely different set of routes, which means that almost every link under tracks in my track views and almost every redirection that's done in the tracks controller is going to be wrong. Right? So pretty much all of that stuff is going to have to be fixed. Okay? Might as well start with the controller because we won't get very far until we've got it to where it's basically right. The basic idea here in the tracks controller is that tracks are never going to be accessed from this point on directly. Instead, they're always going to be accessed through the context of an album. We're always going to have an album when we're working with tracks is what it really comes down to. We'll always have an album available. Right? If we're always going to have an album available as we work with tracks, 
we need a way of always knowing what that album is. So how about we create a before filter? I'll call it load album. And a method to go along with that, load album. So before any of the different actions inside my tracks controller execute, the first thing that will happen is we'll load the current album, whatever album we're currently within the context of. Well, how do we know what album we're in the context of? Well, remember the way our routes were set up for our tracks? They always start off with slash album slash album ID. Well, that album ID is available to us through the params hash. So in our load album method, anytime we say params album ID, that will give us the ID of whatever album we're currently within the context of. So I could then go ahead and retrieve that album with an album.find. So that's a really important sort of linchpin little piece of this whole setup. It means that now anytime we do index, show, create, update, new, edit, destroy, anytime we do any of our track actions, there's always going to be an album there available to us. Okay? You were asking before, would it be possible to access the tracks directly and in the context of an album? Yeah, what would happen is here when this method runs, there either would or would not be an album ID. So based on that, you could figure out whether you actually were within the context of an album or whether you weren't. Right? You'd then have to do something about having album available throughout the rest of it, which hopefully wouldn't end up making all your other actions twice as long as they would normally be. But that might be what it would end up coming down to. Okay. All right, so now that we know that we're always going to have an album, what do we actually do with it? Well, for starters, the index action for tracks right now is pulling up all tracks. That's not what we want. When we go to the index for tracks, Right? We don't want to see every track in our database. What we want to see is all the tracks for this album. So we could change this to add album tracks all. Right? A little bit like what we had done last time with our gadgets within the context of a user where we didn't want to see every gadget. We didn't want to show every gadget. We only wanted to show the gadgets that belong to a particular logged in user. Well, here, we don't want to see every track, right? It doesn't make sense if I go to album one that I see the tracks of album one, two, three, and four. I only want to see the tracks of album one if it's album one that I'm looking at, right? So this will take whatever the current album is and only show me the tracks that belong with that specific album. Okay? Other than that one little change, the rest of the index action is pretty much okay. What about the actual index template? Well, over in the index template, up at the top we say listing tracks. We're not showing all tracks though, we're showing tracks specifically for an album, so what if I change that to say listing tracks for at album.title. And if I'm showing the title of the album up at the top of the page, then I probably don't need to show the album in the table. So let me take out the parts here that actually are showing the track's album. That becomes just sort of redundant. Right. Now, the different hyperlinks that we have on the track index page. We have a link to go to the show page for track, right, to see the details of a track. Unlike with the album, we do still actually have a show page for track and we might want to keep it, but we can't get to it this way. 
if I just say track here is what we're linking to, that assumes the old single layer route exists, right? Track underscore path, essentially. And that doesn't exist. Instead, if I want to see a given track, this is the path that I need. The show action for tracks right, has to be embedded underneath at slash albums and an album ID. So the method I would actually need to use is album track path, and I would need to provide the album ID. So instead of just track right there, I would do album track path and pass at album. The same basic thing is also then going to happen for edit, destroy, and the new link down at the bottom of the page. There is no edit track path. Instead, what we have is an edit album track path that we need to pass the album and the track to. For destroy, the actual destroy action right here doesn't actually have a named route that goes with it. The URL itself, though, is the same as for the show page. So I could use album underscore track underscore path like I had just done up here with the show link. But there's actually a shortcut we can take there as well. When we're working with nested routes, instead of passing a single object just like track, like we have here, if I instead turn that into an array and pass multiple objects, the router can figure out and turn that into the appropriate path, the appropriate route, I should say. Yeah. We could actually also do that up here for show if we wanted to. Oh, as a matter of fact, that show link is wrong. I needed to have track in there like that as well. All right. But anyway, I could shorten that. Just turn it into an array like so. My new link down at the bottom of the page right now is set to new track path. That doesn't actually exist. If you look at your routes, what you actually have is new album track path. Need to pass the album to it so that it can fill in the album ID when it creates that route. And I think for the index action, that ought to mostly take care of it. If I jump back over to the browser and I refresh my track index page for album one, up at the top it says listing tracks for test album one. If I click on new track, it does take me to the new track page the way that it should. So, so far that looks good. Do you have questions about the index controller action or the index template? Okay. Back over to the tracks controller then. Now that index is pretty much set up with show, there may or may not be a lot that we actually need to change right here. We could technically leave it the way it is even though we're not specifically finding a track for an album, we're just finding a track by ID. Since IDs are unique, it really doesn't make that much difference one way or the other. Right? What I usually like to do just for consistency 
is go ahead and change that to album.tracks.find. I'm not sure if performance-wise, if that helps or hurts or makes no difference at all. I'll have to think about that. But as far as just consistency in the code, I like to do it that way because it's that it's fundamentally that way that we're going to have to do it in most all of the others, most all the other actions. The album there that I'm referencing, add album, that's the album that comes from the load album method that we're calling with our before filter. We'll always have that album available. Right. The actual show template itself then. I'm going to change it around a little bit. I'm going to move the title of the track up to the top, make it an H1, like that. I'm going to put in a new attribute down here, right? album, to show which album it's a part of explicitly. So I'll say at album.title. Oh, actually, that was already down here, pretty much. I'm going to wipe that one out. All that stuff is just sort of set dressing. Whatever content you want to show, you can show. The most important thing to change on the actual show template itself is these hyperlinks down at the bottom. Both of them are incorrect. Both of them point to routes that don't actually exist. Edit track path needs to become actually edit album track path. I would need to pass the album and the track to it. The backlink that goes to tracks path, which is the tracks index page, needs to be album tracks path and needs to be passed an album so it can get the album ID for the route. Back over in the tracks controller then, the new action. Okay. The new action for a track okay, gets a little bit more complicated because this is where we were basically trying to eliminate having to select which album that track went through like in a drop down on a as a form control. Instead, we kind of, whenever we create a new track, want that new track to know that it is supposed to be a part of some given album, the album that we've kind of used to get to the new page. So if I go to an album, right, I see a list of its tracks and I click new track. I assume that that new track is the one is going to be created for the album that I'm already viewing. So what I'm going to want to do there, instead of just doing track.new, which is a completely blank and empty new track, I'm instead going to say add album dot tracks dot build. That will create a new blank track for me, except it's not actually completely blank. It will already have the current album's ID filled in. So it'll already be connected to this new album, or to this album that we're uh, modifying by adding a new track to it. The new template, not a whole lot on it. It says new track up at the top. I might change it so it says new track four. And then I'll put the album title there. And the backlink down at the bottom that was supposed to go to the tracks path, the track index, will need to instead go to the album tracks path and be passed an album.
Okay. The form partial that'll be used up at the very top where we actually create the new form. Right now we're saying it's a form for a track. Right? The fact that it's for a track will inform the form builder to help it actually create the form itself, but that will also be used to determine the URL that the form submits to. If I leave it as just at track like it is right now, it'll try to submit to slash tracks as a post request. Right? So basically it'll try to go to slash tracks like right here as a post request. But what I need it to do is I need it to go to slash albums, album ID tracks as a post request so that we get to the proper tra uh, tracks create action. So all I really need to do there is instead of just passing the track, I need to pass the track and the album. Oops, speaking of tracks and albums. I need to pass the album and the track as an array right there. That should mean my form ends up with the proper URL to submit to. Besides that, the rest of the form is pretty okay. The number field, the title field, the duration field, that's all good. The album field here, though, that the scaffold generator put in for us, where we were going to have to put in a big, long drop-down select or some other control to pick an album, that's not even needed anymore. I can just wipe it out. And hopefully that'll leave me with a working form. I'm going to jump back over to the tracks controller now. I'm going to skip over edit for the second. Let's take a look at create. That way we can at least start creating some tracks. In the create action for tracks, the same basic thing as what happened when we went to the new action. Right. By default, we typically would just say track.new, create a brand new blank track from the parameters that have been submitted from the form. But here what we actually want is we want to create a new track that's connected, that's a part of an album. So at album.tracks.build based on the parameters that were submitted from the form. In the respond to block then, if saving that track succeeds, we can't redirect to a track show page by itself. That would need to become an array where I also provide the album. So album track path is basically what that would give us. Let's see how that part works. Uh, if I go back to my albums, I have an album called Test Album 1. If I say Show Test Album 1, this is everything that's on Test Album 1 right now. I'm going to say New Track. Let's say this is track number 1. Test Track 1. Duration, let's say, is 1.1. I'll create the track. The new track is created. Right? It says here it's in the album, Test Album 1. If I click back for Test Album 1, I see the new track that was just created. Everything looks good so far. If I go back to Albums again and I go show Test Album 2, it has no tracks on it which is exactly what I would expect. I haven't created any tracks for Test Album 2, only a track for Test Album 1. If I make a new album for Test Album 2, I'll call this Test Track 1, same as the other one. I'll set the duration to 2.2, create, back. Maybe I'll make a second track to go on Test Album 2. Test Track 2, 2.2. 
2.22. So now test album 2 has two tracks on it. If I go back to albums and go show test album 1, it has its one track. This looks like it's working just fine. And when I'm actually going and creating the tracks, I'm not at that point having to select a different form control telling it which album it belongs to. It just sort of knows based on the route and the way that we actually got to the new page. If we got to it through one album, then the new track gets added to that album. If we got to the new page through a different album, then the track gets added to that different album. Something's bugging me here a little bit, though. When I'm on the... Uh, index page for tracks, which is essentially the album show page. I'd like for there to be a link there I could click to go back to the list of albums. So that's the album index. I'm sorry, the track index. There it is. Down at the bottom of track index, I'm going to put in a new hyperlink. Albums that just goes to the albums path. Which is album index. There we go. So I can click albums, go back to my list of albums, show an album, go back, show the other album. Yeah. Seems okay. Okay. We're through most of the rough stuff. It's just a little bit more of the same. The edit action needs to find a track, very much like the show action did. Again, since IDs are unique, we could just find it in the group of all tracks, or like I was saying, just to be consistent, I like to do album.tracks.find. The update action, again, we have to find a particular track. I like to make that album.tracks.find. After update is successfully complete, when we redirect, the redirect to currently is just taking at track, which would produce an invalid route based on our current setup. So I'm going to turn that into an array and also pass the album. And then finally destroy, down at the bottom of the tracks controller, I'm going to turn track.find into at album.track, tracks.find. And after a track is destroyed, instead of going to the tracks URL, I'm going to go to the album tracks URL and pass the album the tracks index for that album. Try it out and see if everything works. I'm going to make a new track for album one. I'll say it's track number two. The title will be Test Track 2, Duration of 1.11. It's been added. If I edit it, okay, I'll change the title to Test Track 2 1. 
Test track 2.1 looks like the edit took. And if I destroy it, uh oh, something wrong in destroy. When I went to destroy the track, I got undefined method tracks for nil. Let's see, in tracks controller line 82. Um, that looks like a problem. Album needs to be spelled correctly. There we go. Now it destroyed. Let me try destroying this one too, just to be sure. Yeah. New track. If I say track number three, test track three, 3.33. New track 2, test track 2, 2.22. It's putting them in order. Wanted to check and make sure that worked. Even though I didn't enter them in the right order, it is ordering them by the number, by the track number. That is the idea. What do you think? Nested routes? Not too terrible, huh? Good. Doesn't solve all the world's problems. There can still be some funny situations that you have to still figure your way through one way or another. For example, uh, artist. I made artist an attribute of album, I believe. So every album has an attribute, a string called artist. Okay. Really, artist should probably be its own separate entity, right? Because there's lots of details about artist. If artist is the name of a band, maybe that band has members, different names, different years they've come and gone from the band, from the group, right? It's a lot more complicated than just typing in a name. Right? Plus, it's potentially duplicate data in the database. What happens if I uh, mistype the name of the artist in one place but not in others? Well, if I was trying to search or find or locate all the albums by that particular artist, that would definitely lead me to trouble. Yeah. So it would make sense for artists to be its own separate table. But if I made artist its own separate table, where would that fit in with my routes? Would that become a third layer? Would it be artists on the top and then the albums by that artist and then the tracks on those albums? That's potentially one way to do it. Everything that we just did for tracks would have to then be redone in the light of the fact that it's now three levels deep and would then also have to be done for albums because albums at that point would be a second level deep. Artists itself would be pretty easy. Right? Or maybe we decide we don't want to go that far. Right? That's the problem I always have is when I start nesting routes all of a sudden I want to nest everything. Right? Maybe artists would be its own separate little section to the site that's not as important. Or maybe albums go under artists and tracks as a separate thing. I don't know. It kind of all just depends on the use case of how you expect to need and want to be able to access this data. What's most important? Yeah. Let's see. Um... That went faster than I thought. I think maybe we stop here for today. I wasn't planning on talking about anything else, and with only 10-15 minutes left, it would be kind of an awkward place to start something new. So unless there's something else you want to do with nested routes, maybe we'll call it an early day today. Sound good? Great. I hope you all have a good weekend, then. I'll see you Tuesday.